I think let's kick off with the introductions while there's still some people joining. Um, first off, thank you very much everyone for joining us today in this afternoon. Uh, there has been some cold days, but at the moment here, yeah, um, there is quite a bit of sun and it's now nice and warm again. Um, I am Francois, I look after the technical side here at Menlo, and joining us today is Titus from Jinko, who will be taking us through the main body of presentation. We have the chat box in the bottom corner. Um, please feel free to use it should you have any questions um, during the webinar. Um, of course, you can post your questions, then either I or Titus will answer these questions, um, either live or just resp responding to you in the chat. Then I think that is it for introductions. Once again, thank you very much for joining us today and please enjoy the presentation. We will start off with a video. Energy lays the foundation of civilization and gives wings to science and technology. Every progress made by humanity has been driven by the reimagination of energy. Now that our planet has come to the consensus on a more sustainable and low carbon development model, clean energy, represented by solar energy, is now in the spotlight for the potential value it has to offer. Jinko Solar is a solar energy company dedicated to the R&D and manufacturing of photovoltaic products, as well as a provider of integrated clean energy solutions. The company fulfills its mission to optimize the energy portfolio and take responsibility for enabling a sustainable future. Strives for world-class quality with Chinese efficiency and empower a green future with innovation. We forge ahead with foresight. Throughout our 16 years of growth, we have remained true to our founding values, established ourselves in the industry, and stayed in step with the ever-changing market. We were the first to propose the idea of integrated production capacity. Investing in the sections with the most sustainable value in the industrial chain has helped us gain a competitive edge beyond cycles. Based in China, we have built our presence all across the world. Relying on our global sales network and after-sales service teams, we provide high-quality products and localized services to customers in over 160 countries and regions. We are present across all time zones on Earth. We strive to stay ahead of the curve. For many years, we have remained in top spot in PV shipment ranking with over 130 gigawatt module shipment around the world. We've been committed to scaling up new heights. As an innovative leader in China's strategic new industry, we are constantly exploring the possibilities of innovation and replicable applications and consecutively broke the world record for efficiency 22 times. We are committed to energy transformation. We actively invest in the next generation of photovoltaic technology and explore multiple prospective fields formulating an effective coordination among our R&D, manufacturing and sales, ensuring first-time value conversion of innovation. Our hard work has paid off with remarkable results. As a major ruler setter in the industry, Jinko possesses a leading intellectual property system. It is a national enterprise technology center and national technological innovation demonstration enterprise. We keep improving until perfection and aspiring to be known for our supreme manufacturing quality. Relying on the advanced smart production line, we have realized informatization for the entire production process. Our modules have won the title of best performed for many years, helping Chinese products to gain global recognition. 
we always seek for a better future. We are constantly exploring the real-life application possibilities for the photovoltaic technology in a variety of fields, including architecture, transportation, production, and living. With the record high business performance, the ever expanding market share, and industry leading growth rate, Jinko Solar, which has landed on the star market, will take advantage of the national technology strategy to create a shared future with like minded partners. Jinko Solar is honored to take on the glorious mission and opportunities by history to keep leading innovations fulfilling our responsibilities and protecting the environment. So as to compose a magnificent chapter dedicated to the photovoltaic industry. Empower a brighter future with solar. Thank you so much, um, Farah, and also uh, Francois, for the uh, very wonderful introduction. So, um, and um, good afternoon, everyone. I believe it's afternoon for almost all the attendees and also the panelists as well. And um, um, our session today is basically to, uh, we're coming here to talk about the future of uh, solar PV industry in Sub-Saharan Africa and also globally, and uh, mainly focusing into uh, our end type uh, top con technologies. So my name is uh, Titus Koch. I'm the technical service senior manager for Junko Solar, Sub-Saharan Africa. And uh, it's my pleasure to be presenting uh, in this uh, session today. I'm really hoping that this is gonna be an interactive session. Uh, it's gonna be a very good learning session for us. And also for you as well. And also if you have any questions, you can uh, type them in the chat box and also you can contact us directly as well. And uh, I think I've already put in my email address. Should you have any specific questions that you want to um, have follow up uh, later on after the uh, after this presentation? And um, before I start, I want to you know um, first of all to uh, give you an highlight of what we're going to be talking about today in this session. Should be in the next less than thirty minutes. One, uh, of course, I would do the. Um, uh, introduce uh, Jinko for us to be able to understand uh, more about Jinko Solar and then we'll also uh, talk about the technology as well and also the different advantages as well that is of the technology that we'll be introducing to you uh, this afternoon. And um, we can say is that you know uh, Jinko is uh, no doubt that is uh, basically uh, the leading uh, PB module manufacturer and also supply as well globally this is actually based on the records that we managed to achieve that is uh, when it comes to research and development we've managed to achieve more than 26 records and also the record number of uh, shipments as well that we managed to uh, ship that is uh, ideally more than 230 gigawatts of pv modules that is currently installed has been supplied by jinko solar and uh, you know the highlight is basically you know um, if you look at globally the number of shipments uh, for the last uh, last year in 2023 we had a record uh, more than 78 gigawatts of pv modules you know this makes us you know the first manufacturer to be uh, in the top position uh, for more than uh, five years and also we have a huge capacity of uh, uh, rather manufacturing capacity of uh, pv modules with a total of annual capacity of around 120 uh, gigawatts of PV modules, which out of the 120 gigawatts, we're looking at um, a capacity of approximately 90 gigawatts being of uh, N-type modules. And currently, you know, we have a market share of approximately 15%, that is the global market share. And, um, you know, like I said, we managed to achieve a total of 26 uh, records 
this is mainly uh, uh, records in terms of efficiency including the latest one that we just announced last month that is um, n type uh, tandem cell that is basically tandem cell efficiency of around 33.24 percent that we basically managed to uh, achieve the highest record in the industry currently you know and the reason why we are able to maintain this uh, top position is basically because of our huge investment in r d that is basically close to around 6.9 billion uh, rmb that is uh, that is basically a, approximately uh, 0 0.9 or uh, close to 1 billion of uh, us dollars in research and development uh, that is uh, each and every year and also in our r d uh, team currently we have more than 2000 team members in uh, different countries in china malaysia and also in uh, vietnam as well and um, you know we've also been recognized globally uh, you know, based on the experience also, and also um, in a number of awards, including uh, that is the UPDs Research Top PV uh, brand PV in South Africa, in uh, Nigeria, and also in Africa as well. And also most recently, you know, we uh, actually came as a top performer in the QA PVL, uh, PV module reliability scorecard. So I think it is by record that Jinko Solar has actually been a top performer uh, for the 10th time. I think we are among the only two manufacturers that have actually managed to uh, maintain their top position. And um, apart from that is that, you know, in uh, with regards to the, the, the portfolio of uh, the PV modules that we currently produce, you know, we've um, uh, narrowed down, that is for this year 2024, we basically narrowed down to uh, one series of uh, modules that is basically the Tiger Neo series, which is based on the Tiger Neo, uh, um, uh, that is uh, it's based on the Topcon technology that we're going to talk about today. And you know, for this Tiger Neo series, we've also split into uh, sets of uh, micro rectangular, micro rectangular wafers, that is 1H2 by 1H3.5. And also, we also have rectangular wafers, that is basically 1H2 by 1H6.8, and also 1H2 by 210 millimeters as well. And you can see that um, when it comes to the portfolio, the whole portfolio is that we have a wide range of portfolio all the way from uh, um, uh, 465 watt modules between 435 to 465, all the way to 655 watt bit modules, mainly suitable for uh, utility applications and other modules also for C and I and residential applications as well. So what is uh, notable is that, uh, you know, the whole portfolio is actually uh, based on uh, N-type uh, wafers and also top one technology as well. And you can see that the efficiency is basically at least 22% and up to 23%, that is basically close to 24% on the module efficiency. And um, the other thing as well is that, uh, you know, uh, from Junko side is that, uh, like I said, uh, we're mainly focusing into N-type, that is particularly this year and uh, years to come. And uh, like I mentioned before, our portfolio is uh, split into the micro rectangular and also the rectangular products. When it comes to the micro rectangular, that is basically the 1H2 by 1H3.5 uh, millimeter uh, wafer modules. We have the uh, 78 cell modules that is basically by facial all the way to 655. We also have the 72 cell modules that is basically mostly popular for C and I. That is monofacial between 585 to uh, 615. And we also have the by facial format as well. That is 72 cell by facial format. That is 582 all the way to 610. And we also have the um, uh, smaller modules. That is 1.9 meters by uh, 1.134. That is 480s to um, uh, 505. That is mainly suitable for uh, uh, rooftop applications. And you can see that uh, you know the only difference within all these modules is basically the only difference is <coughs> the number of cells, but the technology, the technology, and also the characteristics remain the same. In that we are still using N-type wafers, we're using uh, uh, top on technology, and also more so what we call the Auto 3.0 technology that I'm going to introduce about today. And um, when it comes to the characteristics, we have the features of uh, uh, high efficiency that is basically at least 22% and all the way up to 23%, that is close to 28%. And also for the bifacial modules, you can see we have two classes of bifacial modules. That is uh, the 78 cell and also the 72 cell as well. We have high bifaciality that is basically up to 85%. And we're going to talk about that later on that is mainly on the micro rectangular uh, wafer modules. 
Then on the other end as well, we also have the rectangular wafer modules. The rectangular wafer modules, that is basically a mix of uh, two sizes of wafers, that is 1H2 by 186.8 stroke 188. Uh, and also we have the 1H2 by 210. That is basically our flagship module that we introduce for utility and also light scale C and I as well. So you can see, you know, uh, like I mentioned, is that the difference is the number of cells, and um, uh, that is for the first uh, the first two modules. We, we are using the one H two by two hundred and ten, and you can see we have these are sixty six cell, and also the first one is by fashion mainly suitable for uh, uh, ground mounted applications, maybe large scale uh, C and I or uh, large scale C and I or also utility projects as well. And we also have the other module that is also monofacial as well with only front side generation with power classes of up to 640. And um, the other, the 54 cell modules, mainly for residential applications, uh, for residential rooftop applications also, or maybe you can classify as DG market, we know with power classes uh, between 435 or the way to 465. And you can see that, you know, the reason why they are suitable for uh, uh, DG or rather the DG market or basically the residential market is basically because of the size of the module. That is basically 1.762 uh, uh, by 1.134. And they are all monofacial. Then we also have the option of bifacial as one. Well. And you can see that for the 54 cell module, we have the option of uh, silver frame or we can also have a fully all black module as well. That is why uh, that is uh, mainly for purposes of aesthetics. The uh, characteristics and also the technology is still the same. That is uh, N-type wafers. We also have uh, top cone technology as well. We also have OT 3.0. Like I mentioned, I'm going to mention about this later on. And also the characteristics of uh, very efficiency of at least 22% up to 23% and also uh, low degradation that we're going to talk about later on and also the high bifaciality of uh, the bifacial modules that is the 66 cell and also the fifth fossil module as well and um, you know <clears throat> the, the the other class of products that we we, we tried is that uh, you know we, we tried also to have some bit of uh, premium products as well that will be very useful that is uh, for the market especially uh, for c and i rooftop projects and um, with very dusty environments including let's say uh, uh, in the deserts uh, let's say the calorie deserts and uh, some any other dust areas or even close to cement factories so we tried to have more of uh, uh, we could in other ways call it self-cleaning modules but uh, you know, we remove the A side of the frame. This is how the frame will basically look like. We only modify the size of the frame, that is the, the side of the frame, so that ideally we achieve more of uh, self-cleaning modules. So that easily, you know, with dew in the morning, you know, uh, uh, the dew drops can easily roll over the dust or the surface. And basically there is no accumulation of dust on the surface of uh, the PV module. So you can see this is also another um, uh, this is also another uh, module that we also introduced as anti dust module. This is only available in the 72 cell monofacial modules that is with power classes between 505 to 610 watt peak. So this is currently in production and we can uh, uh, offer it that is as an alternative module that is on request. And um, the other thing is, uh, you know, uh, like I mentioned, is that our main focus is uh, um, uh, N-type modules. And uh, just to give you some perspective, is that, you know, <coughs> Jinko Solar has actually been uh, one of uh, the industry leaders when it comes to N-type. You know, initially, uh, we uh, we uh, uh, led the industry to donation from, uh, that is from polycrystalline to monopack. And uh, beginning 2022, we uh, also led the industry to transitions to um, N-type modules. And um, that is beginning 20, around 2020, not 2022. And from N-type modules, we actually started with the first generation of uh, uh, N-type technologies, that is the PAP technology. Then um, in around 2022, we also introduced uh, that is the Topcon technology as well. Some some of our other competitors also went to uh, some other technologies like Airtel Junction. And of course, we also have the combination of IBC as well. And what are you looking into the future now is that maybe uh, one or two years to come, we can uh, be able to see other technologies, including basically a combination of Topcon and IBC, or also a junction technology and also IBC, uh, uh, that is IBC technology. So to have HBC and also uh, TBC uh, respectively.
So that is basically what the feature is going to look like. But what we're looking at currently is that we actually still at the second generation of um, N-type uh, uh, modules. And for us to be able to appreciate this further, you know, uh, you know, uh, PV Infoling has done some very good research to see on the, um, what is uh, the market trend when it comes to uh, the technologies and also the capacities from different manufacturers. And you can see that, you know, uh, like I mentioned in the previous slide, for N-Type, we have three mainstream uh, technologies. That is the IBC or other XBC. We also have the Ethereum Junction, and also we have the Topcon uh, uh, technologies as well. And you can see that um, looking at the market projections, like in 2022, uh, the market share for N-Type was still a bit lower. That is less than 100 gigawatts. And 2023, we are clearly looking at uh, you know more than 600 gigawatts as the total capacity. In 2024, we are actually looking at more than uh, <coughs> more than one terawatts. That is at the uh, total global capacity. And also uh, with all this, you know, with the expansion in the uh, technology capacity as well, there is also the segmentations to Topcon. Uh, we also have the P-type monopack as well. We also have the XPC as well. And also the uh, that is the Ethereum Junction. So we are looking at, uh, you know, Topcon having the largest capacities. That is basically pieces from PV Infoling that for this year in 2024, Topcon is actually going to have a close to 920 gigawatts of capacity that is followed by uh, Ethereum Junction that is close to 74 gigawatts and also XBC that is close to 65 gigawatts that is for this year. So ideally, you know, Topcon is going to uh, form um, the overall capacity uh, fraction is going to be around 65 gigawatts uh, compared to all the other technologies com com combined. And uh, <clears throat> Ideally, you know, the reason why Topcon is, uh, you know, gaining traction is mainly because of the ease of conversion. That is uh, a production line from um, Monopack and also uh, that is to Topcon. There is there are fewer lines or other process that needs to change. And also the, also the other aspect of also the cost, uh, that is the cost of uh, production from uh, Topcon, uh, that is in, uh, <coughs> of Topcon compared to Ethereum Junction or rather IBC or rather uh, HBC, sorry, XBC, sorry. And um, if you look into from Jinko side, that is uh, from Jinko side, you know, uh, <coughs> not really from Jinko side, but from the global perspective, this has actually been uh, the trend from uh, way between 2006 to 2013, where polycrystalline was mainstream and we had the efficiency limits getting to almost 19%. Then uh, from 2016 all the way to 2022, you know, uh, uh, P-type uh, pack modules or other monopack modules came in to uh, improve the efficiency from around 19.5% all the way to approximately 23, uh, that is to approximately 23.5%. And you know, uh, the theoretical limit for uh, uh, P type efficiency was uh, basically going to be um, uh, that is from uh, whether it was test or skill came to around uh, 24%. Then we also add now in 2022 with the introduction of N type that is top one, uh, pushing, uh, you know, we project that you know, we're going to push the efficiency from 24% all the way to 28%. That is the cell efficiency all the way to 28%. Uh, approximately 28 or 28.7 percent and um, you know after this now around 20 uh, <clears throat> around 20 uh, from uh, 2028 moving forward we expect that you know uh, <clears throat> uh, we're going to have uh, multi-junction cells as opposed to the previous uh, single junction cells that is what we had before and we're going to have uh, multi-junction cells including the likes of tandem that i'm going to introduce uh, briefly before the end of this presentation and we're going to have efficiencies that is uh, getting to more than 33 percent and um, from jinko side just to give you an overview of uh, what we've done uh, that is for the past few years you know like i said in 2020 and also 2021 when we were still you know introducing n type we actually started with the n path modules that is uh, the path modules that is a uh, Pacificated emitter here totally debused that I'm going to do. I'm not going to really talk so much on this. And we know we are looking at getting to efficiencies that is cell efficiencies, maximum efficiency of around 25.2%. And we used to call this the 1.0. And um, also we went to uh, in um, that is uh, uh, from around 2022, we introduced the top cone of course uh, the, the 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 first generation of top cone that is we call it the uh, 2.0 of course with selective emitter that is, that is the distinctive technology 
and um, we managed to get the cell efficiency of up to 25.8. Then just recently in 2024, that is actually starting from Q2, uh, end of Q1, we introduced also the OT uh, 3.0, that is also still top on technology, but we change from selective emitter now to uh, ME technology or other materialization uh, enhancement that I'm going to introduce uh, later on. And we expect that we're going to push the efficiency with this ME technology from uh, that is uh, uh, of to up to 27% in the next uh, uh, in the next one year. Then later on, you know, we're looking into uh, between 2026 uh, to 2028, we're also going to have another technology that is for 3.0, 4.0 to push the efficiency limit all the way to 28%. And uh, <clears throat> I'll want to now um, uh, go to the next section that is to just uh, give some uh, technology explanations of, um, you know, wh what is uh, TopCon, what is N-Type, so Topcon is basically, you know, uh, it's an uh, N-type technology. It's actually a technology that is applied to uh, N-type wafers. The same way we had uh, a PAC technology that was applied to uh, P-type wafers. So Topcon to basically mean tunnel oxide precipitated uh, contacts. So what do you mean by Topcon? Topcon is basically, uh, you know, um, what, what, what I mean by topon is basically uh, is the process of uh, tunneling that is uh, a process of tunneling the solar cells and the what are we I think get to achieve um, a topcon solar cell is that basically we have we usually have a layer of an ultra thin uh, silicon oxide and uh, that is deposited uh, uh, that is deposited on the rear side then we also have a thin layer of uh, uh, doped silicon that is also deposited on the rear side as well so the purposes of these two is basically to um, the purpose of these two is basically to form a uh, passivated contact structure to ideally to reduce the recombination of charge carriers on the rear side of the solar cell. And you know, reducing this uh, with this uh, passivation and it gets to reduce the recombination of charge carriers, we are able to improve on the overall cell efficiency as well. And uh, ideally, on this tunneling layer, or rather the uh, the passivation on the rear side of the solar cell, we get to allow my, my majority carriers to pass, and also we also resist the minority carriers' uh, uh, recombination on the rear side of the solar cell. And um, the other aspect that we get to see is that with top con, you know, uh, why uh, why top con, uh, or rather why our top con uh, solar cell stands out is that because of course we're using n-type wafers. N-type means that uh, you know instead of uh, using a boron for doping process, as we had in p-type, we're now using phosphorus. So ideally, we've uh, reduced uh, uh, the effect of boron oxygen combination, and hence we uh, basically get to reduce on the degradation of uh, the PV module. That is the reason why you know the degradation actually the faster degradation decreases from uh, the previous 2.5 or 2 percent. That is for the first year to uh, 1 percent uh, uh, to actually less than 1 percent. And also using also the two console cell, like I explained on the previous slide, that is in the structure, we also have with the passivation, with the tunneling uh, layer on the rear side, we also get to reduce, uh, we also get to reduce uh, recombination uh, rate on uh, that is on the PV module, and we get to improve on the overall efficiency. And like I mentioned before, with these top console cells, we will be able to reach uh, more of um, and limits that is at the recall limit of up to 28.7%. And also, you know, with the improvements also is that we've also integrated uh, SMBB technology. That is, SMBB is basically silly mass bar, multi bus bar. Uh, basically, you know, having more than, uh, uh, it's more of a multi bus bar, but we are now having, instead of the previous 10 uh, bus bus in one solar cell, we're now having up to 16 bus bus, uh, 16 bus bus in one solar cell and even more. So ideally, you know, with this, we get to reduce on the resistive losses inside the solar cell and gets to also contribute to the increase in the efficiency of the solar cell. And the other aspect as well is that we also get to uh, reduce on the risk of micro cracks because of the enhanced reliability, uh, because of the reinforcement from uh, the slim uh, bus bus in, uh, or rather the bus bus, and the more the increased number of bus bus in the solar cells. And um, <clears throat> looking into uh, the other aspect as well, that is, uh, uh, 
looking into uh, the other aspect also for the top console cells is that you know uh, with the top console cells we uh, get basically uh, four main advantages and one is basically uh, with the participation on the rear side we get to uh, you know with uh, use of silicon oxide and also the uh, uh, dope silicon on the rear side we get to reduce on um, the reverse uh, saturation current density that is uh, the value of jo that I was actually referring in the uh, earlier slide and of course we get to uh, you know uh, achieve high efficiency we also get to uh, you know maximize also on the light absorption also on the rear side just because of the perspiration as well we also get to um, uh, you know achieve um, that is i it, uh, with the use of anti wafers we also have uh, higher photon uh, uh, carrier lifetime and uh, this is the reason why you know we have uh, reduced degradation that is either the first year degradation or also the annual degradation uh, from the previous values of two uh, percent uh, to currently less than one percent and also the annual degradation from the previous values of 0.5 percent to the current values of uh, basically uh, less than zero point uh, less than 0.4 percent that is per year and uh, <clears throat> looking into uh, the other thing also like i mentioned to you you know the key technology uh, for um watch 3.0 is basically the introduction of uh, uh, materialization enhancements. So what is materialization enhancement? Ideally, these are technology that looks into uh, reducing on the concentration of uh, um, uh, the aluminum material in the silver, uh, that is in the silver pest. So just to give you some bit of background is that if you uh, check clearly the market currently is that Jinko Solar is actually among the only uh, manufacturers that can um, successfully as actually successfully uh, produce um, n-type monofacial top cone modules. modus and you can see that uh, the other manufacturers are only focusing into uh, bifacial modules the reasons why they've actually not been able to act into the issue of um, the high risk of uh, damp heat degradation so you know uh, initially when we introduced like i said you know we started um, the introduction of n-type close to five to uh, six months uh, that is before other manufacturers so we managed to uh, you know with r d and also the huge investments we actually managed to uh, figure out the challenges and also the solutions that is to the damp heat degradation as well and one of the solutions that we uh, were looking into is basically one of the solutions that we're looking into is one is to reduce the concentration of aluminum oxide in the silver pest in the silver pest and um, of course because this was basically you know with combination of encapsulants like eva you know uh, there was high acidic content and uh, there was high risk of uh, acidic corrosion that is with the use of eva at that particular time so and ideally that was one way you know the first uh, solution was either you know we avoid the use of uh, high acidic pests like uh, the likes of uh, poe that was our initial solution and also our second solution that we basically managed to act that is from the uh, start of this year is basically to modify on the chemical content of the eva or rather the encapsulant that we use and modifying the chemical content is basically reducing the aluminum concentration by more than 90 percent and hence we get to uh, one you know we reduce on the risk of uh, dumping degradation that is currently being witnessed by one uh, most of the manufacturers we also uh, manage to improve on the cell efficiency as well we also have excellent uh, reliability because you know uh, reliability is basically how we can be able to withstand the ash environmental conditions which is also including uh, uh, um, that is the damp heat reliability as well that is also specified as uh, that is in IC uh, standards as well and also we've also done uh, that is extensive uh, outdoor generation comparison generation comparison as well that is uh, with metallization technology combining now with uh, dual eva on the front side and also on the back side and also with the combination of also poe on the front side and also the back side as well so just to explain is that you know eva and poe are some of uh, the common encapsulants that we use but for Jinko side, you know, the most common, uh, uh, we don't use the normal EVA. We actually use, uh, uh, that is EVA, where we've actually reduced the aluminum concent, uh, that is aluminum concentration by no more than 90%. And so we uh, reduce on the risk of uh, uh, damp heat uh, degradation. 
and um, in the future looking into the future like i mentioned to you like um, in the next uh, three or so years we basically going to see the market moving from a single junction source that is to multi-junction source and um, you know what we're looking into from our R&D perspective right now is that we're looking into having in tandem source tandem source is basically you know uh, more of uh, uh, there is more of a combination of uh, two types of source one is the current uh, silicon cell, and we'll also have other uh, cells as well, including perovskites that we're going to use, ideally to be able to absorb, that is uh, on the top uh, band, to be able to absorb, uh, that is the high energy photons on the top side, and also on the bottom side, to be able to uh, absorb on the uh, um, and low energy uh, photons as well. In this case, you know, we get to uh, improve on the uh, light utilization and we also get to improve then the overall, that is the overall um, uh, efficiency of uh, the solar module or rather the solar cell by more than uh, that is and uh, having the efficiency now getting to uh, more than 32%. So ideally, you know, this is actually something that we're currently evaluating and Jinko's R&D is basically working with, uh, or rather in cooperation with um, uh, different uh, research institutions to be able to see that this actually comes to, to uh, uh, play that is in the next uh, uh, three or so years so that we can have the efficiency of the solar cells by um, that is to get to more than 32%. And um, I'd like now to look into the final session just to uh, now uh, explain to you, you know, with all these investments in technology and also with uh, the R&D that we managed to uh, have into uh, uh, the Tegenio and specifically the OT 3.0 technology. So what uh, basically advantages we managed to achieve. So we can say that, you know, uh, we've had the EMI technology like I explained to you in the previous slide. We also managed to lower the degradation of uh, the modules. Now we have uh, standardized the market uh, uh, power warranty from the previous 25 years to the current 30 years warranty. And also we managed also to reduce uh, that is the temperature coefficients that is from the previous 0 0.35 to now less than 0.29% uh, per degree Celsius. So ideally, you know, we get better performance at uh, 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 in regions of high temperatures as well. And also, we've also enhanced the reliability. We've uh, done, uh, that is extensive liability testing to make sure that we know uh, modules can actually be able to withstand harsh environmental conditions, including damp heat. There's also the other aspect of uh, thermocycling as well. There's also the other aspect of UV exposure and um, and uh, and and also other aspects like uh, uh, LID and LTID and also PID as well. So this reliability, you know, the test reports we've collaborated, we've done internal testing and also testing with also that party labs, and we can share these reports on uh, request. And um, you know, um, with this now, you know, we find that the uh, the Tegenio modules that is uh, mainly makes use of uh, the top one technology and also the OT 3.0 technology as well. You know, we get to have temperature coefficients that is of up to 0 0.39. You can see if you compare the performance of P-type, that is an N-type modules that is um, at uh, different times of the day, you can see that the performance of P-type, the degradation of N-type is actually lower that is uh, approximately from around 11 a.m. to almost 4 p.m. and uh, that is compared to uh, the degradation for uh, the p-type modules mainly because of the factor of the temperature degradation and also you can see also is that with the warranty now like I mentioned before uh, with um, uh, the, the, the very good degradation that is there one percent degradation we can be able to guarantee 99 percent for the first year and you can see also instead of 25 years we now guarantee up to 30 years you can see also we can guarantee at least 87 percent of 87.4 percent of uh, uh, the um, of the uh, uh, pv module outputs that is at the end of uh, 30 years and also uh, for for maybe for large scale utility and also uh, ground mount uh, uh, large scale CNI and utility projects as well. You know we also get to have efficiencies that is uh, uh, that is high perfectionality factors of up to eighty five percent. That is compared to other technologies the likes of Aether Junction, which can barely get into uh, less than um, uh, less than eighty five or less than eighty percent in the perfectionality. So looking into this is that if you're working on a bifacial uh, or rather um, a bifacial project, you know, you can actually be able to, let's say approximately, let's say the reference, the baseline being a monopack module, 
being able to generate close to around 9.45 you know with a beneficiality factor of 85 percent you know we can be able to generate up to uh, 11.48 that is hoping and there is a two percent difference in the generation difference that is only because of the change in technology from monopark to uh, top con technology and uh, we also have other factors as well including the the aspect of uh, lid that i did mention that is uh, because of the low boron uh, content in n-type modules because we're using phosphorus doping we actually able to lower the uh, lid and also LED factor by less than to up to less than uh, that is uh, less than one percent uh, as compared to uh, the previous p-type modules where the uh, lid and led factor was actually less than uh, that is was up to between 0 0.9 to 1.2 percent compared to the current value of less than 3.5 percent that is at the lid and also the LED factor as well this is also what i've uh, also mentioned that is comparing the liability of uh, n-type modules and also p-type modules as well and also because of the uh, carrier lifetime Oh, uh, that is uh, the p-type, uh, the n-type modules, the retropon modules. We uh, basically looking into extended generation by approximately one hour. That is uh, extended generation, uh, or rather because of a uh, better performance in uh, low light environments. So ideally, we're looking at close to thirty minutes and also thirty minutes in the evening as well. So approximately uh, extended generation by uh, more than one hour because of the performance, or rather the uh, uh, the uh, better performance at uh, uh, that is low light environments. Uh, rather at low irradiance and you know combining all these factors uh, that is combining all these factors uh, with the advantages of the uh, tegeni or rather top on technology that is including the degradation uh, the, the reduced degradation the temperature coefficient as well and also the high beneficiality we're actually looking into a cumulatively that is over three uh, percent increased generation compared to uh, the normal uh, monopack modules as well and you know, if you're working into uh, factors of uh, levelized cost of energy, which is basically uh, total uh, cost, capex, and also opex as well, divided by the improved generation, if we can be able to only increase, even maintaining the same uh, cost, that is capex and uh, opex, and increasing the uh, generation by more than 3%, we're able to reduce into the overall levelized cost of energy. So this is basically the contribution of uh, Tegenio uh, that is to the levelized cost of uh, the project. And just to, to end up, you know, uh, I know it's been uh, quite a long session, but I just wanted to mention that, you know, uh, with, uh, with uh, the, uh, the growth of the solar markets, uh, mainly in South Africa, in Africa as well, and also global as well, We've also seen um, the surge in surge of uh, uh, fake modules as well. That is fake ginkgo modules, uh, also other manufacturers. I think it's also good for us to mention that we, uh, we, we've we given a platform to be able to verify the authenticity that is of our PV modules. So one factor that we try to make sure is that always uh, buy from uh, authorized uh, dealers including the likes of uh, Mendo Electric for uh, South Africa and other regions as well. And also, uh, you know, just uh, you need to, you know, it's, each of the PV module has a unique serial number. You can always uh, verify by scanning this QR code. It will take you to a link that is usually available in our website and you can be able to verify the authenticity of the PV module. You know, it's usually good for you to uh, buy something that is also genuine, that is actually going to be useful uh, to you. So I think you can uh, uh, you can scan this code. You can go to Jinko website as well, and you can be able to get this information how to verify the authenticity of your PV module. So that is the end of my presentation. Uh, should you have any questions, you know, this is my contact details. You can scan this and you can get my mobile number and also the email address as well. Should you have any questions and uh, uh, or comments on also clarifications as well. So I think we can, uh, and I can now go back to Frank Royce. Thank you very much, Titus, for that presentation. Um, we just have another small video to um, play you. This is regarding the Tiger Neo, so just to showcase a bit more of the Jinko panels.
And here we go, just a quick video on some more information on what Jinko Solar has to offer. Now, just to take you through the presentation on who we are at Menlo, what do we do, and how can we help your solar business boom? So once again, thank you very much, Titus, for that very informative um, presentation. Um, one, just a reminder to everyone, if you do have any questions, please do not hesitate to use the chat box. Um, we will take a look at the questions at the end of the webinar. If you have any questions at a later stage, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. We will happily assist. So we had our presentation on Jinko Solar and their N-type technologies. So who are we exactly at Menlo Solar? So we are a leading solar distributor of solar panels, inverters, batteries, and accessories, serving over 300 clients in over 40 different countries every month. We work directly with the manufacturers, such as Jinko, Sungro, Fox ESS, Fotonica, Huawei, and other brands. Last year, we were the second biggest distributor of solar, um, Jinko solar panels in South Africa. So Menlo Electric is a company that originates out of Poland. And as we just saw in the previous slide that we do serve over 40 countries. So of course, one of those countries being South Africa. And of course, serving South Africa, it is very important to have a local team who understands the market and understands your requirements. We have a full local team of sales, logistics, and technical here to support you with anything you might require. When it comes to product selection, we at Menlo take it very seriously. We do not just see a product as another thing to sell at this stage or another uh, economic product to sell when the you know when you are looking for your cheapest panel your cheapest inverter we take it very seriously when we select manufacturers or products to partner with they need to have good quality and reliability they need to be ahead of the curve compared to the competitors and they need to be in it for the long run. Of course, market reputation is also very important. And we all know that a solar system is not something to be installed and used for the next year or two years. It is a long term investment for you and your customers. Therefore, we ensure to only select the best products to ensure that you get longevity out of your system and your products and you have the support when you require it. So as we said, we are in over 40 different countries and with having such a wide footprint, it is very important to have exceptional logistics. So we have over 15 strategic locations spread across EMEA. We work with well-known and trusted couriers. And we, of course, offer customized solutions depending on what you order. So in South Africa, we have three warehouse locations in Johannesburg, Cape Town, and Durban. And then, of course, we can assist you in any of the other locations as well, whether you are in South Africa, Zimbabwe, Botswana, or one of the other SADC locations. Menlo is a rapid growing company. We have over 900 megawatts of equipment sold in 2023. As we said, over 40 markets that we cover, over 11,000 orders completed in 2023, 15 logistics hubs, 75 megawatts of PV components shipped monthly, and over 170 members on the Menlo team. At Menlo, we are not only a business, we also care for the community. We have a CSR collective called Solar to Share Collective, 
where we donate free PV installations to healthcare, educational, and other like-minded uh, institutes. To date, we have over we have 15 solar stations in seven different countries, 395 kilowatts of total installed capacity, 10 partners supporting these projects, over a thousand PV panels installed, over 12,500 tons of CO2 saved, and 50% reduction in energy costs. We are continuously busy with these type of projects. Should you be interested in joining this Solar to Share Collective, um, please do not hesitate to email the email you see on your screen. Um, of course, this presentation will be available for you at a later stage. So should you want to go back and take a look at it again, then you can, of course, do so. Then uh, just a bit more on our product offering. So just to focus on the inverters and battery side, we do have residential inverter offerings that goes from 6 to 10 kilowatt single phase. 12 to 30 kilowatt three phase. All our inverters are high voltage, which means is a better efficiency, easier installation. And of course, um, plug and play. So we have Fox ESS and we have SunGrow, which are very easy to use and very easy to install, which saves you valuable time on site. Then on the commercial inverter range, we have 30 kilowatt plus three phase inverter offerings. And of course, CNI and utility scale offerings as well. Then we also offer PV cable from ENCO, the six millimeter squared um, PV cable. It does have the tinned copper conductor, which we know is very important when it comes to PV cables. And of course, we have it available in black and red. Then we had the entire presentation from Titus just now um, about the um, Jinko solar range and what we offer. So we do have 460 to 575 watt P types and N types monofacial and bifacial. Of course, if you require a specific panel for your project, please do not hesitate to reach out to one of our sales representatives and we will happily assist. Then Menlo Academy events. So as everyone knows, we do host these Menlo Academy events, such as the one you find yourself in today. They are available on our website, or you can just contact us and we will give you the date and time of the next one. Our next one is available for sign up now, which is on the 27th of June. It's another solar panel um, presentation where we learn a bit more about solar panels and their different technologies. And that it is it from my side on who Menlo is and what we offer. Once again, I just want to provide a reminder to everyone, please use the chat box for any questions you might have. We will answer everything at the end of the webinar. We just have another small video to play on case studies. And then, of course, should you have any questions at a later stage, please do not hesitate to reach out to us and we will happily assist. We are located in Abu Dhabi, near Alain. This project is the largest project in the world in one single phase. 101,077 megawatts direct current, 
that's me, mean 936 approximately megawatt AC. We are using more than 3.2 million panels from Ginkgo Sola, using 804 inverter from the, a European manufacturing. We have deployed the Manover Perk technology, which was a quite advanced technology back in 2016. The Noor Abu Dhabi was one of the first projects that have utilized the monoperic technology. The monoperic technology have very much in uh, optimizing the LCOE by reducing the capex as well as enhancing the annual energy and yield generated from the power plant. The Noor Abu Dhabi PV project has a lot of economical and environmental benefits. In terms of the economical benefits, it will help and reduce the amount of expensive gas that we are burning every day in order to meet the electricity demand for the country. And in terms of the environmental impact, it's going to meet the renewable targets of the government and as well as it will create the knowledge transfer from the foreign to the UAE nationals and create jobs for them. Many innovative solutions and products have been adapted in the project, such as the BV modules, with monoperic technology, the ground screws as a foundation for the mounting system, and a very efficient and cost-effective robotic cleaning solution from China. A total of 6.5 km square is being cleaned daily by 1,400 robots, and the solution is performing very well. A total of 1,177 megawatt have been installed and currently operational on the site, with a total project cost of around $877 million, making it the largest PV power plant operational to date, with the lowest cost of electricity at 2.4 cents per kilowatt hour. We break the record of the number of Moises installation. Uh, we have installed 200 megawatt in one month, and we break the record of 26,000 Moises per day. It's a world record that we finished the construction of the BV plant within 12 months. We're very proud of developing, building, and operating the first gigascale BV plant in the world and the largest to date. Thank you once again, everyone, for joining us this afternoon on the Jinko webinar. Um, we will now open up for Q&A. So if you do have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask them. So we do have a question that came through regarding how big do your inverters go as a single unit? Um, so on the single phase inverters, our largest single inverter is 10 kilowatts, which you can then parallel uh, should you require more than the 10 kilowatts single phase. On the three phase or the smaller three phase side, we do have the largest is a 30 kilowatt three phase, which you can then also parallel. When it comes to the CNI utility side, of course, that then depends on how much power you require. Um, we do have from 30 kilowatts, which you can go up to 90, and then we can do single 100 kilowatt units. And then, of course, should you require something bigger, we will then have that in the utility side of things where you can then of course scale to whatever size you require. I hope that answers your question. Okay, please, if you do have any questions for either me on the Menlo side or for Jinko um, towards uh, Titus, um, please do not hesitate to ask them.
as stated before, this webinar will be available for you to view again. That will be available on our YouTube channel um, and other platforms. So do, do keep an eye out for it should you just want to go back and recap some of the information. Of course, should you have any questions later, please do not hesitate to reach out to any one of us at the Menlo team. Uh, we will happily assist you. I do not see any more questions coming in. Um, once again, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us today and have a lovely afternoon further. Okay, thank you so much, everyone, and have a good afternoon.